Hi, I'm Jeff Murr. I want to welcome you to True Texas History, where today uh, we are going to cover the life of Hiram B. Granbury, um, whose last words were, never let it be said that Texans lagged in the fight. Let me go ahead and tell you about his story. Uh, Hiram uh, B. Granbury, and the, the B stands, uh, depending on the source, some say Brinson, some say Branson. Uh, typically, when you're going through historic documents, sometimes uh, people don't transcribe things uh, correctly. Uh, I think Bronson, uh, from some of the older sources, is probably more likely, but um, he was born uh, in Mississippi uh, on March 1st, 1831. Uh, and he grew up there in Mississippi and actually uh, attended Oakland College, which is over near Raymond, Mississippi. Um, he had a lot of family in the area in the 1850s. He went ahead and moved to Waco, Texas, where he passed the bar, and he ended up being the Chief Justice of McLennan County. Now, bear in mind, McLennan County in the 1850s uh, was still pretty near the frontier, and it took some strong men to go ahead and uh, and strong women to go ahead and tame it and deal with a lot of those frontier type issues. Um, and he became a prominent man in the community and actually he ended up uh, marrying a young lady who moved there from Alabama. Her name is uh, Fanny Sims. And uh, at the time they married, uh, Hiram was 27 and she was 20. Now, one of the things that we forget is that many of the uh, people that played prominent roles in early Texas history were very young, um, at least in the case of Hiram Granbury. And when uh, the war came along, uh, Hiram went ahead and did his duty, and he uh, was elected uh, to be the head officer of a unit called the Waco Guards. And uh, he ended up going ahead and serving uh, in the war. Now, uh, prior to going to war, his wife developed some health problems. And as he went ahead and went off to serve in the war, his wife went with him. And uh, she followed him. Of course, she stayed uh, several cities behind. She was not there on the front lines, but uh, oftentimes wives would follow their husbands uh, to the battlefield in the case uh, Fanny did. Uh, Fanny was in poor health, and uh, in one of the early actions, um, he ended up uh, being captured uh, with some of the action that uh, happened, and he was taken prisoner, uh, and he spent time going from one prison to another. He went ahead and... Uh, asked for permission to go ahead and take care of his ailing wife. And he was given that permission. You know, a lot of times history books paint, you know, the Yankees, just these terrible people, but oftentimes they did uh, go ahead and allow people to uh, be furloughed from prison to go ahead and take care of ailing wives. And he uh, was able to do so uh, when she was in, uh, I believe in Tennessee. Uh, and then later he was sent to Camp Chase and some of the other northern uh, prison camps, uh, and she moved to Maryland. And when he was eventually allowed to go and care for her there in Maryland, which he did. Um, now, some of the early history books say that she uh, ended up uh, becoming ill due to the northern climate. Uh, some of the more recent research uh, that took a look at some of the letters written by the doctor found that she had a very advanced state of ovarian cancer. Um, and so she ended up, uh, well, finally uh, Hiram was uh, paroled uh, from the prisons, came back down south uh, once again. Uh, took care of his wife for a while. Uh, she ended up dying at the young age of 25. Um, and he definitely put himself into his job as a way to go ahead and deal with it. 
and in one of his early commands, he found himself uh, commanding the 7th Texas. Um, and ironically, uh, the place where they were fighting was around uh, Raymond, Mississippi. In fact, the, the Battle of Raymond. And um, bear in mind, this is where he went to school. He knew the area. Um, and literally, uh, some of the fighting was uh, on some of the ground belonging to members of the Granbury family. And so... Uh, this is one of the factors that contributed to the Seventh Texas putting on such a strong performance uh, there at the Battle of Raymond. Now, keep in mind uh, what happened there. You had a whole uh, division of the Union Army coming up against one brigade of Texas troops, and they held their ground and did so quite firmly. Um, I know that, you know, when you start talking brigade, regiment, all those names, it's easy to get lost, but roughly you had um, ab about uh, a little less than a thousand men standing up to a force that uh, was five to ten times larger than that uh, and holding their grounds. And through uh, not only the action at Raymond, um, because keep in mind, the Battle of Raymond took place three weeks after Fanny passed away. This was a man in grief, and uh, he threw himself uh, into his responsibilities. Uh, he went on to distinguish himself uh, even further. I know the other day I talked about the Battle of Ringgold Gap. Uh, well, the Battle of Tunnel Hill, excuse me. And at that battle, uh, the previous commander of the Texas men uh, was wounded and taken from the battlefield. Command was turned over to uh, Granberry, who uh, masterfully uh, handled it. Uh, they repelled uh, several attacks on their position and did so successfully, even to the point where they ran out of ammunition. They had to use rocks to uh, beat back another one. Um, he had victory after victory like this, and uh, he eventually found himself uh, as second uh, in command to Patrick Claiborne. Uh, he saw action at uh, Chickamauga, uh, Ringo Gap, um, and several other locations. Now, uh, Hiram Granberry was wounded uh, at Chickamauga and later lost his life in the Battle of Franklin. The Battle of Franklin is a tragic one because uh, a lot of Texas troops lost their lives there. Several Texas generals lost their lives there. Uh, and it was in that battle, uh, once again, he was second in command um, to Patrick Claiborne. Uh, of course, here in Texas, we call it Claiborne. Um, and uh, right after Cleburne uh, was killed, um, command fell to Hiram Granberry. And of course, Granberry told his men, remember Claiborne. Um, and at uh, one point of the battle, uh, some of the Southern troops uh, were advancing and some of the Tennessee troops got ahead and uh, Hiram Granberry, um, forward men, never let it be said that Texans lagged in the fight to try to get uh, the Texas troops caught up with uh, the Tennessee troops. Uh, and at that point, he uh, received some fatal shots and fell crumpled to the ground. Um, now, uh, Granbury, along with uh, Claiborne and several other Southern generals, uh, died in that battle, and their bodies were laid out on the porch of uh, the house there. In fact, there's still blood stains on the house uh, from where that happened. Uh, and his body was initially interred there. Now, later uh, in 1896, they transferred it from uh, its location there in Tennessee to present day Granbury, Texas. Now, one of the mysteries is um, what happened to Mrs. Granbury? Uh, what happened to Fanny? Uh, you know, because there is uh, quite a love story uh, of a husband caring for an ailing wife. 
uh, since they were not wealthy and this was during a time of war, she uh, ended up being buried um, essentially anonymously on some of family members' uh, plot uh, in the South and uh, is buried in an unmarked grave. They didn't even have the money for the grave. So uh, it's a tragic story uh, because when the two of them died, they had no children uh, and the Granbury line uh, ended. Fortunately, there's the city of Granbury, which uh, carries on the name and the legacy. Uh, now, the statue of Granbury that uh, is there in the city was originally purchased by the United Daughters of the Confederacy uh, and imported from Italy. And uh, the community was very proud of it when they uh, initially set it up. So I wanted to go ahead and cover uh, the battle, uh, I mean, the story of Hiram Granbury. Um, he ended up dying at the Battle of Franklin, which was on November the 30th, 1864. Um, and uh, we need to remember some of these heroes, because keep in mind, he was, uh, at that point, uh, in his early 30s, uh, when he died, uh, leading the Texas troops of the Granbury's Brigade uh, at the Battle of Franklin. So uh, if you have any questions or you know, any suggestions for people who you want me to go ahead and cover, feel free to let me know. I'll be glad to cover them. Uh, I welcome any thumbs up. Uh, and until next time, this is Jeff Murrah wishing you vaya con Dios, my friends. Goodbye.